Well, we're, well, we're excited, excited to, uh, um, to a little bit back feet. We're very definitely very excited, excited about starting the season, season um, in 2023. Uh, had a great camp. Uh, probably one of the better camps that I've had as a head coach in the last 13, 14 years at the college level. And um, we went out and really got better as a football team. Uh, there's still areas that we need to improve in. Um, we understand this is going to be a big task for us. Um, so we're we're excited about heading out to our, up to Arkansas on Friday and go play our very best. We're we're not gonna try to run out the clock. We're gonna we're gonna be aggressive. We're gonna try to score points. We're gonna try to get ourselves in a position to um, see if we can um, you know stay in the game as long as we can and and have a chance to win it. Go ahead, open it up for questions. Thank Thomas Murphy. We'll get you uh, first question. Gotcha. Hey, hey, Kerwin, thanks for being on here. Um, I wonder how difficult is it to get a read on Arkansas personnel with so many transfers coming in? Did, did you guys uh, have to go in any other tape to figure out what you're going to see from a personnel standpoint? Yeah, we spent, you know, we with it being your first game, and um, we spent a lot of time during the offseason really studying that and, and their different personnel that they've brought in. And But, hey, that's the age of college football now. It seems like every, every team is so different from year to year uh, with the transfer portal and, and, and those things. Um, so we're sort of used to it. You're used to having to, to just sort of go in blindly a little bit sometimes um, as far as personnel is concerned. Um, used to in the old days, you knew who was coming back, exactly who was coming back on each team, and you sort of knew the personnel because you'd played against those guys. And uh, But now with the portal, it's, it's definitely a – um probably more on the job type deal where you're in the game you've got to make some adjustments maybe maybe you see a defensive end that you thought you could block in one-on-one -on -one situations maybe now you know you get in that first quarter and you decide hey we got to chip him we got to we got to double him um we got to get the tackle some help because he's a lot better than what we thought he was so a lot of in-game in you know adjustments and and things that we're going to have to deal with with two new coordinators at Arkansas, did your tape study involve, say, Central Florida defense, uh, Florida State defense, and what, what on offense? Like, uh, who? Do you, how did you pre prepare for the two new coordinators? Well, yeah, both of them have history, you know, being at one at UCF, and then I think Enos was over at Maryland, and we've studied some things that he's done, and and um, we, you know, I've I've known him, and and he's done such a great job offensively. Uh, even back, I remember back when he was at Arkansas um, before. So, um, you know, there's definitely, again, uh, a lot of in-game situations that we're going to have to adjust to, just like they'll have to adjust to some of the things that we do. Uh, we're doing some things a little bit different than we did last year, um, trying to be a better football team offensively and defensively and special teams. So we changed up some things. But, um, yeah, we've done some research on the guys. Um, you know, both of them are really good coordinators, and um, it's going to be a big tef test for us. Hey, hey, I saw on your Facebook show from yesterday that your defense has done a lot better, that you that your defense has stopped your offense or made your offense really work. What specifically do you think has made you you're a better defensive unit going into this year? Well, I think one thing, we've got more depth, right? We When a guy here, the talent level wasn't where it needed to be, and you could only play a certain amount of guys. They had to play a lot of reps, um, and that's not good nowadays in college football for defenses. You got to have guys that you can run out there. You know your first and second stringers that can all play uh, because of the pace of the game and and the number of snaps that you're asking them to play. So we think that's one re reason we're better. We we've, we've definitely got more guys who can play at a higher level um, on defense, and um, we can rotate those guys, especially up front. We're a lot better, a lot deep, deeper, um, and we think we've got more talent in that area than we've had since we've been here. So just because of that, I think we're going to be better on the defensive side of the ball. And then I think we're, we're, we've are we really done a great job this offseason of um, just tackling better, you know, really working on that. We were not a very good tackling football team. And I think that's going to be a kid for us, see if that's, that's um, really improved the way we think it has. Um, I guess a really good Arkansas football team that's got – some unbelievable athletes back there, you know, what their quarterback and running backs, probably the top two tandems in the, in the country. So we're going to see if we've improved as much as we think we have in, in the tackling department. And hopefully we have. Thanks, man. We'll go uh, Bob Holt. I think you got the next question, Bob, you identify yourself and we'll go with your questions. Uh, hey, Kerwin, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Cause that I, I work with Tom over there. Um, hey, uh, 
it was reading through Daniel's notes, which are really, really good, by the way, very thorough. And uh, Western Carolina's never beaten an FBS team. I know that's the case with a lot of FCS teams. It's it's a tough challenge. But um, how, how do you how do y'all approach a game like this? The staff, the players, and how big would it be? I mean, I'm sure you know the Citadel. It was it was a long time ago. They they came in to Fayetteville '91 and knocked off Arkansas. Well, you know, it's a big task. Listen, and I told our, I've talked to our team already about just the size difference. Uh, listen, why are they those guys at Arkansas and, and you're here at, at the FCS level? Is because I don't think it's a skill level. We we flat out going to recruit FBS skill level. Uh, if if you don't have the skill level, I played in the NFL. I play at the highest level. I know what great talent is as far as skill, throwing the football, catching, defending, um, you know, defending the pass, running routes, back running backs. Now we're a bunch of misfit toys, uh, you know, instead of the the perfect back at 240 pounds, which is what Rocket is over there. Um, we've got guys that are maybe five seven, but they got the skill level to 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 compete. So now it comes down to size. And when you go against the guys bigger than you, it's just like anything. If you got a guy that's bigger than you, you gotta now use your heart and your grit and all those things that that you gotta have to make up for that size difference. So we're going in with the idea that we can compete. There is going to be a difference in size and, and things like that individually uh, in some matchups. But um, listen, I, I always, I've always been a coach. I'm, you know, I know there's some guys that try to just run out the clock and don't get beat too bad. I don't care how bad we get beat. If we get beat, we get beat, but by God, we're going to go throw everything at them and uh, we're going to be aggressive. Uh, we're going to try to win the game. And if they blow us out, they blow us out. I don't care. Uh, we're not trying to keep the score clean. Um, uh, uh, close uh, we're trying to be a better football team and let me tell you something that to me that's going to be the best reps that we we will have all years to go against Arkansas see who we are so let's throw everything at them let's don't be conservative let's play the way we're going to play the rest of the year and I think that'll tell us a lot about ourselves and, and as we get into the Southern Conference I was wondering if I could ask you about some of your your top personnel on offense if you wouldn't mind kind of going over like Co Gonzalez I know he's Billy's his dad so he's a coach's kid um, what do you expect from him and then uh, Desmond Reed and AJ uh, Ballinger? And I know your your offensive line has a couple all conference guys or preseason all conference guys. If you wouldn't mind maybe going over your personnel a little bit. Well, everywhere I've been, we're going to have skill players. You know, we're going to have guys who can who can put the ball in the end zone and and create explosive plays. That's who we recruit. You know, I I'm not the kind of guy you're not going to get see a six two receiver that looks pretty that can't run and drop his hips and be explosive in and out of cuts. That's not who I am. I, we're not going to throw 50 50 balls. We're going to create guys in space and get them in space. And we want to then have these explosive players who can create explosive plays uh, with that. So that's where it starts is just that, that commitment to, to who we recruit now. Uh, are they five seven or are they five ten? Um, you know, they may not be the perfect size, but they can flat out play the game of football. So that's the way we look at it. They may be skinny when they get here, but we've got to develop those guys. I'd much rather get a guy who's 160 pounds who can flat out play the game of football receiver than a guy who's at 200 pounds who'll never get any better because he's he's maxed out. So that's the way we recruit. That's the way we've been able to be successful at this level. Um, but it starts for us everywhere I've been, I've taken over programs. I've always looked the offensive line, even though I'm a quarter, former quarterback, probably that's the reason why is that, <laughs> that the other line's where it starts. And, um, if you want to be a great football team year in and year out, you better be good up front. Um, you know, at Valdosta state, we did that in three years. We won the national championship after taking over there with probably the best offensive line in division two that year. Um, and we had all these young athletes and skilled players around them, freshmen and sophomores. But because that line was so dominant, it helped those other guys play at a high level. And we think that's hopefully what's going to happen this year. It starts for us up front. We went from, I think, a bottom third tier um, in FCS O-line till now we're probably top – I think we're top 20 in all of FCS um, as far as an offensive line is concerned. I think we're that good. Um, we've got three guys I think will have a chance at the next level. Our right tackle, Derek Simmons, and then our left tackle is – is Tyler Smith, who's played a lot of snaps, and um, in our left guard, uh, Christian Coulter, who's a, a big athletic guard that played tackle for us last year and now has moved inside. So we feel very comfortable about, you know, last year we went up against Georgia Tech and we really, I thought, 
played really well at the line of scrimmage against those guys. But, um, you know, from there, it's still depend on – we've got some really good skill young guys at receiver. I think – I don't see us having problems in that area. Receivers, running backs, we're going to be explosive in those areas. Um, but it's still come down for us for the whole year. Our quarterback position is going to be key. And, um, you know, Cole came in as a true freshman last year. We didn't expect a lot from him. Um, but our starter got hurt. and He got a chance to play, went three and one. Uh, beat Chattanooga, who was the 15th team in the country, the last game of the season in a very tough football game, uh, grinded out kind of game. And, um, you know, he what he showed to me and what I the reason I've sort of – he's been the sort of the, the favorite going into this thing um, this fall was because he has the skill. We all can see guys who have skill to play, but I think the guy that you got to have to win a championship is a guy that you really don't – you don't know if they have it until they get on campus. And we've seen it from him last year. He has that ability to get guys to play great around him. They rally around him. He's a great leader on the football field uh, and gets guys to play at a high level. Um, he's very tough. Uh, guys believe he's tough the way he plays the game, man. They um, they feel like he's a tough customer who will get the job done no matter what kind of game they're in. So, um, And he's very poised as far as being able to, um, you know, play at that level when the game's on the line. So, we feel like we've got a guy who can do it. We've also got a guy in Charlie Dean who went, who played at Harvard, uh, was a year and a half started there, um, played a lot of ball there at Harvard. We think he's got a lot of ability. So we feel like we've got two guys at the top there that can go get it done. We'll probably play both. Um, you know, they'll probably both get in the game against Arkansas and get them some good reps and, and see where we go from there. Okay, thanks. Uh, Andrew Hutchinson, I think we got uh, your question up next. Hey, Coach, Andrew Hutchinson with Best of Arkansas Sports. Uh, you mentioned K.J. Jefferson a little bit earlier. I'm just curious kind of what your impressions are of him um, after uh, watching him on film and just kind of what, what do you expect to see from him? Well, he's a big man. I'll tell you what. He's, um, you know, you watch him in press conferences, his arms are as big as D-line arms, you know, the D-lineman that's sitting up there by him. So he's a phenomenal-looking athlete. Uh, just seeing him and in per, you know, just seeing him on film, and then uh, just his skill level is very impressive. You know, a guy who can really run the football, uh, create a lot of explosive plays in the run game, but then really throws it well also, and and um, you know, stays away from from trouble. Um, really efficient guy, which is what I look for in a quarterback. So. Uh, he's, he's also made them go, you know, that's a tough conference that sec. And, um, but when you got a guy like him, that's pulling the trigger, you got a chance. And, um, that's why I think Arkansas don't have a really good chance this year in that league is because you got a guy like him who can make a difference. And so what's for the key for us is going to be, can we get him on the ground when he makes those runs? Can we cage him in the pocket and make sure we make him a pocket passer and don't give him those explosive runs out of the pocket um, and then also the same thing with Rocket. Can we get them on the ground? You know, they're going to get their yards, but let's don't give them the easy 60-yard runs that are that are easy touchdowns. Let's make them earn it. And um, if we can do that and tackle well, like I said earlier, and be a better tackling team this year, and if we can show that this first game, I'll be very pleased, and I think we'll, we'll be in the game. And looking at your roster, it seems like you recruit Florida pretty heavily. I know you played there as well. Um, I'm curious in your recruiting efforts down there, did you ever come across Rocket Sanders when he was in, in high school and just what were your impressions then? And have you, are you surprised at all by how, how successful he's been at Arkansas? Yeah, his, his head coach, I know really well. Um, uh, so yeah, I know he was very frustrated. I remember when, when Rocket came out, because I, I don't know if a lot of Florida schools really was real high on him. Um, and, um, uh, now look what he's turned into, you know, the best back in the SEC. So, um, yeah, I remember him coming out and, and Wayne Younger is the head coach, um, was his head coach and Wayne actually coached for me at Jacksonville university for a couple of years. So former quarterback and a really good coach. And I know he was frustrated with the sort of recruitment of rocket. He said, he's going to be great. And he, he's wound up being a great player. So, um, but yeah, the Florida connection for us has been big. You know, I've Play, you know, being the head coach at JU, Jacksonville University there in Jacksonville, Florida, we were able to bring in a lot of Florida talent and then went to Valdosta State. And in that three years, we recruited a class that, that you know, won a national championship in eight, 18, led the nation in, in offense. Um, and a lot of those guys were from 
Florida, especially South Florida. So we sort of stay with that same connection when we got up here. You know, the portal's been great for people in certain areas. You know, for us, uh, we hadn't big as been as big as far as re- the, the transfers. We've got a few guys here and there, and that's the way we want to approach it is maybe fill in certain areas where we need a veteran to come in. Um, but we, what we've done, we've taken advantage of the portal because of the number of players who don't have scholarships that are left without scholarships because of the portal. Think about it. All these college teams are now, instead of taking 20 maybe high school players, they're taking only 10, and the other 10 is transfers. So that leaves a lot of high school kids out there that we feel like maybe be maybe maybe some of these guys are FBS level. They I know they've been offered by FBS schools, the ones we've been able to come in on, and they got dropped. And so we've come in and got some very talented football players. Um, I think the last two years we've been the number one team as far as in the SOCON in recruitment. We were third in the nation last year in our recruitment of our our freshman class. So uh, we feel like we've we've been able to be um, really good in that area as far as building this program. Thanks, Coach. I think uh, Ethan uh, is up next, and we'll go back to Bob. So, Ethan. Yeah. Hey, Kerwin, thanks for doing this. Um, Ethan Westerman, wholehogsports.com. Um, yeah, I know you're really high on your offensive line, saying that you've revamped it since you've been there, but pretty big test against the Arkansas D-line, I'd assume, week one. What do you think of those guys whenever you've looked at them? Well, i tell you what, you know, what the ones they've added with who they got now, I think they're nine or 10 deep. You know, you look across their, their depth chart, they got some really good football players. So they're going to be, you know, rotating those guys. The heat's going to be a little bit of a problem. So uh, let's still keep them fresh. And, and um, so we've got a work cut out for us, you know, for them. And, you know, we've got all kind of packages um, offensively where we got to make sure it, the only way we we can have success when you're playing against a team that's, you know, at that level, you got to make sure you get them on their heels a little bit, get them thinking a little bit defensively, um, play fast, um, you know, motion, do some things um, to make them think uh, maybe, hey, do I need to line up a little different? Um, where's my check at? You know, if they're thinking and they're on their heels a little bit now, I think we'll have a chance to have some success. So uh, that's the way we play the game. So that fits us perfectly offensively. That's how we score a lot of points is we try to get guys on their heels a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to do that. But listen, this is a, this is a really good football team up front. They've done a great job in the portal going out and get some really good football players and um, they're big, they're athletic, and it's going to be a big challenge for us. And then looking kind of at your numbers last year, it was a really, really good year for y'all offensively, but it seemed like kind of an Achilles heel was just turnovers. Um, how important is that, you know, playing an SEC team to not beat yourself? Well, we got to, you know, for the whole year, we've got to do a better job. We've always been great in the turnover ratio. We've always been plus double digits. And last year we were negative in that and uh, very disappointing. You know, we averaged 32 points a game and should have averaged 45 or 50. I mean, we turned it over. We didn't weren't, weren't good in the red zone. Defensively, we weren't good in the red zone, and yet we still finished six and five. So that tells you, to me, we were last in the league in penalties, last in the league in, in um, turnover ratio. Um, and yet we finished with a six and five record. So if we can prove in some of those areas, we got to get better in some of those areas. Um, then we can be a really good football team. We have the talent. We played with a lot of young kids last year. Hopefully they're growing up and, and, um, we can cut down on those penalties. We can cut down on those mistakes as far as we got to protect the ball and, and make sure we create more turnovers. So that's been a big preaching point for us all off season. And, um, it's going to be big this Saturday. If we've got a chance to even stay in the game, then we've got to make sure that that we take care of the football. And last thing for me, I know y'all finished the year really strong last year with that win over Chattanooga. And you said that, um, you know, a phrase that you've kind of brought up a lot is championship DNA that you saw it coming out. Just uh, what is that? <laughs> well, I, you know, I've been, I had the opportunity to build a lot of programs and then, well, three or four here in the last few years. And um I think there's two things that's got to happen right off the bat um, that before you have a chance to even compete for a championship. Two things: you got to create a roster that has unbelievable, has the kind of players that you want. And for me, I have a big conviction on the kind of players I want at each position. Uh, and then I, I want the mentality and the characteristics of a of a self starter, a guy who wants to be great, a guy who wants to be the best in the in the game of football, and will work outside of practice because he has a desire to be so good and and he's a self-starter in those areas 
uh, if I can create a locker room full of those guys, then we're going to be a really good football team. We're going to have a great culture. Um, and then, you know, once we create that, and then what to me, the, the number one thing a head coach has got to do is create talent at every position. So you create competition. If I can get a guy, you know, my first and my second string can compete against that first string and my third string's young, but he can go, go compete against those guys. Now we're creating a roster full of competition where we can become a better football team. Now think, think about it when you've done that. And we've done that here in two years, we've, we've turned over a hundred out of the 120 players on our roster our new players in just two years. So what that does when you build a program, it creates this environment where it's a bunch of individuals. Right. And I think, I think we showed that a little bit last year in our second year, you know, we go to Sanford and we're, we're just as talented as them, but they beat our butt uh, with Mercer beat our butt. Um, but they were more connected as a football team. They'd been together longer. We played as a bunch of individuals. And I told even, I told the coaches at Mercer, I said, man, give us another quarter. I want some of that DNA y'all got. I want our players to, to see that. And, and you got to go through tough times. And so we've kind of gone through some tough ones, but as a head coach, then you say, when is it going to happen? When are we going to connect as a football team? When are we going to start trusting each other and play as a, as a, as a team, a true football team, because you can't win a championship till you get to that point. And last year, the last three games, I seen us play like that. We played in some tough games down to the wire. Nobody complained. Nobody looked right or left. We just looked ahead and trusted each other. And so that's what's got me so excited about that championship or bust mentality going into this offseason. We're at that stage now that where we've got the talent built on this roster where we want it. Now we're starting to trust each other as, as family and as a teammate to go out and play and you got to do it on the field together before it happens. So we went through some tough losses. There might be some tough ones ahead of us, but I think we're now in that growth stage to where we can compete for a championship. It's always been like that for me. Um, and, and everywhere I've been able to build programs into championship programs, uh, it's always happened that way. That second phase, you always say, when is that going to happen, man? You hope it don't happen year four or five or before you get fired. <laughs> Uh, for us, it happened in year two. That last three games, I seen this football team start become having that championship DNA that you got to have, and so I'm excited about going into this year, grow even more, and see where we can get to um, heading into our year three. We'll go back to the legendary Bob Holt. Oh, yeah, appreciate that, um, Coach. I want to ask you a couple more things about your person now, Desmond Reed. I know he rushed for almost 900 yards last year as a freshman. What what makes him such a good back? Well, we, you know, that's the one reason why I recruit South Florida is because, uh, first of all, I'm well connected down there with the high school coaches. And, um, and um, you know, the one thing they've told me down there, they said, and, and you can go ask them all, they'll say Desmond Reed is one of the best backs that's come through there in the last 10 years. And they're talking about backs that went FBS. He he was dominant down in, in, in South Florida, which is talented football, um, a talented football league and area. He ran for 2,500 yards, I think it was. Um, so he was a very, very talented kid. What happened? He has some FBS offers because people send him on tape. They go down and he's 5'7, 180 pounds, 175 pounds. So he gets dropped. And so, but as far as talent and speed, he ran 4'3 at Florida's camp when he was a junior. Uh, I think he ran 4'3 one. He's all nothing but a ball of muscle. Um, and I tell people all the time, I have no problem with him being five, seven, by God, we don't play basketball around here. We're trying to, we're, we're playing <laughs> football. I don't care how tall he is. Uh, but the kid is special. He had a high ankle sprain all last year as a true freshman still ran for 900 yards. Um, we think he's going to be really a special player for us these next three years. And, um, I look forward to watching him just continue to grow. He's a great kid. Got a great attitude. He has that self-starter ability about him, man. He loves to get in the weight room. He loves to to lead. He's always out on the field early. He's out there late after practice. He stays out and does extra work with his hands. So we've got to find a way to get him the football, either in the throw game or the run game. At least twenty times, he's got to touch it, and uh, for us to be successful. How tall was Emmett Smith? Was he like five nine or something? Yeah, he uh, Emmett. Listen, I was a senior at Florida when he came in as a freshman. He's five nine, hundred eighty five pounds, ninety pounds, thick lower body, but smaller upper body. Um, grew into, you know, the kind of player he was, but just a great football player. I, that's what I look for. People said, 
you know, why do you, some of these guys look like misfits, you know, they all short and skinny and, but I just get great football players. We'll go, we'll develop them. We'll get them bigger. Um, they'll grow. Um, but we just want explosive players who can make plays and hopefully that's what you'll see. And, but again, it's going to be a big difference in size as we get there on Saturday, but, um, we're going to give it our best shot. And I hope I'm saying his first name, right? Is it, is it Anton Williams, your, uh, linebacker or Antoine? Antoine. Yep. Antoine, okay. Yeah. Um, he always had big numbers at Austin P and I know he's preseason all conference. What, what, what does he bring to your defense? Well, like you say, he makes a lot of plays. Like if you look at his numbers behind the line, tackles for losses, sacks, you know, he made a lot of tackles. I think 90 something tackles. He's, he's not a real big wheel backer, you know, he's a real athletic kid. Um, and so he's going to bring a lot for our defense, just a guy who can tackle the football, which is what we need. Uh, and create some big plays on that side of the ball. See, I, I think defense now, people say, what are great defenses? I tell our defense, that don't mean you just stop everybody. Like back in the old days, man, when I played, you know, defense go out there and maybe give up two drives in the whole game and feel feel like they're great, and they were. But nowadays, you just you can't hardly stop anybody. It's just a matter of can you make it tough on the offense to score points? Can you stop them and make them kick field goals? But Because offense are going to move the football nowadays. Um but you got to do that. You got to create some negative plays defensively, you know, uh, to be successful. And I think he's going to bring that to us. He's going to bring some ability to create some negative plays and tackle for losses and things like that. Listen, he's going to rotate with a guy we think is going to be a superstar around here. He was a freshman when we got out of Miami, uh, Haywood McQueen. Um, he's a dominant played, played as a freshman, only at 185 pounds. So he got dropped by FBS also he got hit off first to, F, to FBS schools got dropped because he's only 185 190 he's now 205 210 Will Backer who can run like a deer really athletic and so them two are going to rotate at that one position so you know again we're, we're creating depth we're creating just abilities um, for us to be really dominant hopefully on offense in, in this conference thanks I mean on defense We'll go back to uh, Thomas Murphy's. We wind things down here, Mr. Murphy. Yep. Hey, co hey, coach. Did they keep you guys informed at the, the kickoff time might might change? And also um, attached to that, what do you think of playing in Little Rock versus um, Fayetteville? Well, as far as that first that last question, I, I've never. It's funny. I've never played in Arkansas or never been to Arkansas, and I've been to almost every state. Um, yeah. But, you know, we Arkansas wasn't in the SEC when I played, and. So I've never been to either one, so I really don't know uh, that answer. Um, you know, I, I've heard Little Rock is loud. Like, you know, people there really get into it. The one game they have there every year or every other year, I understand it's going to be really loud there. So um, I think it's going to be a great environment for our kids to enjoy. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And um, what was the first question? I'm sorry. Well, well, did they keep you guys informed that the kickoff time yeah. might change, or did you find out yesterday? No, we, we knew on Saturday, I think it was, they were starting to think about it, you know, but they had to get it okayed through the SEC and things. And our DFO was was just keeping me informed. Um, they sort of asked, I don't know if I had anything to do with it, but <laughs> they asked if I was okay with it. Um, and I was fine with it. Um, you know, I didn't have any I didn't have any reason not to change if that's that was good for the players and, and um what they thought was good for, for everybody, you know, the fans also with the heat. So um, you know, as my only involvement and my DFO just kept me in and he said, Hey, Monday, they'll sort of know for sure. And, and that's, that's what happened. Cool. And my final question, what do you think of an old school old line coach like Sam, you know, veteran old line coach getting a chance at head coach and what, what, I guess what he's done from what you've seen. Well, you know, that's something, ain't it? It's, um, and it's funny, I, most old line coaches, when you see, when they become head coaches, they do a really good job because, that's one of the main – it's almost like when you coach an offensive line, it's like coaching that football team, right? You you don't just concentrate on one guy or one visit. You, you've got five guys that's got to work together as a football team, sort of like the whole team. Uh, when you're a head coach, you have to understand the whole picture. You can't just um, – you can't just, you know, just coach one or two guys. And so I think that's what's, you know, great about him is that he's been an O-line coach. He's had that ability to, to – to um, bring five guys to play as one and play together. And I think he's probably bringing that same experience uh, as far as being a head coach. But 
you know, the one thing he's going to bring, you know, is that O-line coaches, they're going to be physical as heck. Uh, they're going to want to run the football. And so, you know, we got our work cut out for us because that's the areas we've got to get better at. So it's going to be a big challenge for us to see how far we've come uh, just to compete at that level um, and see where we can be as far as, you know, the rest of the season going into our conference. Yeah. Again, thanks, Coach. Safe travels. All right. Thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. Any final questions for head coach Kerwin Bell? Uh, I, I, I had a, a couple. I didn't want to cut time off there. If, if Coach uh, Kerwin still has a couple minutes. Uh, your, kicker, your kicker, man, he's got numbers. You know, Nick Saban would probably love. And I know he's got a pretty good <laughs> kicker himself, but um, what, what, what would you say about you? I think he said 85 straight extra points and 30. 85%. Maybe I'm getting my numbers a little bit. Really good numbers for your kicker. What what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, he's um, you know, we we're glad to have him back his last year. He he sort of went in the portal real quick and um came to me and said, Coach, I made a mistake. I want to stay here. You know, he's got a chance to break all the records here. Um, uh, he's a good kid. He's a good kid. He um, you know, we hadn't been able to give him a full ride um up until this point. So, you know, he was just gonna see what was out there, but um and he had people talking to him because, like you say, I think he maybe kicked 30 in a row at one time um, here the last year or so. Um, and so we're glad to have him back. He's got one last year. He's went off this summer with some some gurus, kicking gurus. We don't have any around here in Coloey. So um, went off um, and and with some NFL guys. And, uh, man, he's he's even hitting it better, uh, longer, higher that we, you know, we needed from him. So, uh, he's going to be a big key, but you know, one thing that's really, I got him to get up and speak to the team the other day because he had told me a little bit about why he wanted to come back so quickly after entering the portal is because he really missed these guys. He he understands what we got going on here. There's something special he says going on. He told the team that, and um, you know, what we're building toward um, maybe something that's never been done before, man. I, I tell our team, you know how great this could be for you that just in this time that you were born, what, 18, 19, 20 years ago, and right now you've got opportunity to do something that's never been done here at Western Carolina University. That's when a conference championship, win a national championship. How great is that to be in that position? And I think he understands that. He he conveyed that to the team, and he wants to be a part of that. And so we're we're excited to have him back. You, you, you mentioned basketball a minute ago. I don't know if you knew this or this is some kind of motivational thing you can do, but I – Back in 2003, Western Carolina came in here and beat Arkansas in basketball. I don't oh, know. If I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's maybe <laughs> look it up. Um, did they bust all the way here and, and knocked off the hogs? <laughs> uh, just just wondered. And, and they had a Kevin. Um, man, I can't think of his last name. Great, he played in the NBA. A heck of a Kevin play. Martin. Kevin Martin, yeah, he he was a heck of a yeah. Kelvin, yeah, he played for Eric Musselman, I think, in the NBA, and Eric's the coach here now. But just is that some? I mean, maybe it's off the wall, but you know, your basketball team came in here and knocked off Arkansas. Is that anything you might talk to your team about, or show them a box score or something? Or uh, <laughs> well, no, we probably won't talk them too much. That basketball ain't like football. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not when it comes to, you know, FBS, to FCS, I don't believe there's much comparison, but, um, you know, the, the physicalness and the, the, again, the size difference individually is going to be the big key. Can we handle that? Can we not be intimidated by that? Can we, can we take that heart and grit that's going to take to make the difference up? Because like I told our team, I, that's what I'm preaching to them is let's don't be, let's don't be afraid to go make plays, man. We've got the skill level to go run with these guys. Listen, we've got some fast football players around here, so we can run. Um, but don't be afraid of the size difference. That's still be the big thing like for football is just the physicalness. Can we adjust to that? Can we control the line of scrimmage enough to where we can do some things successfully, you know, especially on the offensive side of the ball to stay in it a little bit and stay in the game. Um, but listen, we're going to, I tell people all the time, man, I've got, I've got six bullets in my gun that, that I carry and I'm going to shoot all six of them up in the air. Okay. But, um, we're going to, we're going to take every shot we can take and we're not going to be, if I get fired because I'm too aggressive, I got on, we'll get fired, but we're going to, you know, our motto is around here is live on the edge. And, uh, we, we want that mentality, no matter who we play, that's our mentality. That's leaning forward, toes in the ground being in an aggressive position to go make plays on every snap of the football. And 
I want my offense coordinator and my defense coordinator to call the game to where our, our players say, by God, they make making calls for me to go make plays. I never want our team to feel like they got to be on their heels because of what we're calling. And I want them to always be in an aggressive position. So we're going to be aggressive. We're going to go have fun. We're going to go see how we can stack up against a really good football team, very talented football players. And um, it's going to be a, just, uh, you know, more than anything, uh, whatever happens in that game, we're going to find out what kind of football team we can be because, you know, we're going to get exposed in certain areas and we're going to see now, can we now become that kind of football team that can go win a Southern conference championship? That's what we're going to try to try to do the rest of the year. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you spending all this time with us. It's a big help. And Daniel, thanks for setting this up. Yeah. Glad to do it. Appreciate you guys. we got our whisk coach off to uh, another podcast and another radio interview. So he's got uh Uh, Basically, he's all kind of Arkansas this morning, but we appreciate everybody joining us. If anything else you need from me, 